What up guys, what's up? It's Shani with Healing Elements and I'm here to add another addition to the playlist of archetypal analysis. This time I am doing a archetype video all about Medusa. So the Greek mythological character of Medusa. And so if you know a little bit about the story, you may not know the whole story, but this whole archetype and theme has a big meaning um, about being misjudged or not having the full picture or not understanding the truth to a story, taking one side perhaps of a story and um, believing the narrative that is presented to you. So the archetype um, of Medusa is talking about a transformation from a innocence into a maiden that is full of life and due to a traumatic event uh, becomes vengeful because she then is scorned and lets the chaos, humiliation, and trauma build up within her and turn into anger and rage. So when we talk about the archetype of Medusa in Greek mythology, the traditional story is that Poseidon or Neptune, um, known as either, seduced. So basically sexually assaulted Medusa when she was innocent and in fact very coveted, very beautiful. She was said to be you know, um, said to be pristine and pure of beauty with long locks of hair, extremely gorgeous, enviable, beautiful hair was said to be Aphrodite beauty worthy. So very, very pretty and innocent and again was seduced and tricked and basically assaulted by Poseidon in which it then takes a nasty turn because trust that Medusa has. She runs to Athena and this assault was done in a temple, a temple dedicated to Athena. And this is a mistake. The um, tale takes a completely different turn in which the blame is shifted. She runs to Athena and expects to have some sort of camaraderie between the women and understand the assault, uh, giving her, you know, comfort and allowing for her to have reprieve uh, because, of course, this would be, you know, a taboo to have done in the temple of Athena and because of Athena's very jealous sometimes persona. So the blame shifts and Athena punishes Medusa rather than nurture her and accept her as a true victim. So the Medusa archetype um, punishment to the victim in a circumstance talking about jealousy and humiliation leading to such a strong reaction. Jealousy being a big emphasis when we talk about the archetype of Medusa. Jealousy and the women rivalry and the notion to compete or chastise a woman rather than support and empower them is a big theme with this archetype. Again, you know, jealousy and humiliation when done wrong, even if the party tries to be clear with you and turning on the victim in a situation. So, you know, um, this of course was traumatic to begin with for Medusa so this added an extra layer if you can already see the um, feelings and the dread and the disappointment the abandonment the utter devastation that Medusa felt not only from the assault but then after uh, mistrusting Athena it was already something that was devastating. And then um, Athena decided to punish Medusa by objectifying 
her in the opposite way. So of course, if she was objectified in this way and looked at, sought after in a positive way, very attractive, um, Athena put a curse on her to make her extremely ugly and hideous apparently to the opposite sex, someone who is feared, loathed, and um, very much repulsed by the general public or the opposite sex. So, you know, this is a archetype that has to do with slut shaming or a typical, you know, blaming the person who is the accuser rather than trusting that there is a story in an admission when somebody comes to you with a story out of vulnerability that rather than punishing it especially the person we need to take a neutral stand at least um, and not turn on the victim in this case Medusa and the punishment was um, not to tell you the truth turning men to stone I'll tell you about that in a minute. It's interesting. I found out looking in the encyclopedia online that that was never in the original text or story. So this was um, the case for the snakes as hair, though. So the punishment was for her to become hideous and look extremely unattractive for the rest of her life. And so she actually, her hair was turned into snakes and also... The original text mentioned that she had fangs, and tusks, uh, tongue that stick out, and you know, um, very very masculine features like a beard, things like that. So, you know, of course, turning her something into something uh, that Athena deemed unattractive and a punishment of isolation as well. So, the archetype of Medusa also speaks of you know, femininity and the innocence of a maiden and the transformation then of coming of age, whether or not that comes about with a, you know, traumatic event such as the story or some other uh, awakening to adulthood that is um, a stark reminder of our feminine qualities and how they can be objectified and taken advantage of and actually portrayed in very different ways based on the narrative and who is speaking these things, right? So there's also, uh, I think, a big tie-in with Lilith and the dark moon energy, your animalistic or dark side coming out because of a situation that scorned you, so vengeance and you know how half a woman scorned that quote reminds me of this energy uh, being vengeful and wanting to actually take your emotions and hurt and anger frustration out on not just the party who inflicted this on you so instead of taking this out on let's say the goddess athena who punished her this is in the traditional stories she was not evil and did not look to harm anyone, but she was a monster. And so the only thing I could find on turning people to stone is that it was said to be a shocking, like a, um, um, a deer in the headlights type of uh, shell shock experience because, quote unquote, the beast and the vision was so ugly of Medusa, which is more, I think, of a metaphor of a hurtful psyche, right? And bearing that, you know, uh, ruined reputation or perception of that and uh, perception of being hideous and or someone repulsive or feared in the eyes of someone else when they don't know your story of origin or the whole entire story is something of a huge insult and hurt to our psyche. So I think that there's big energy with that as well. Um, of course, when we talk about the story and Medusa running to Athena to say that she was assaulted by um, Poseidon, this is about trusting someone with blind faith, um, thinking that they will believe you and that they have your back 
and a big shock, a stunning realization when the opposite is actually done. And the right thing, quote unquote, to do is right in front of your face shown to you that you're not worth in their eyes. And this is a stark realization about your worth for friendships or other people that you may um, hold in the sacred circle of trust, that sort of thing. Also, um, this archetype is about isolation, doomed to repeat a cycle of being one who is scary or repulsive to other people, isolation in eternity. Uh, also, um, talking about, you know, transformation that is due to being violated. So, either a you know, betrayal makes you what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Either betrayal, you know, teaches you a lesson and you may become jaded for a little bit, but transmute this energy and understand that rage isn't going to turn the plot. It's not going to change any circumstances. And so then on the contrary, you can, in this case with Medusa, uh, be so furious and feel so uh, condemned due to the punishment and or betrayed and absolutely stabbed in the back that you can develop a vigilante, isolated, loner, vengeful approach to life and that in turn can be, you know, turned into blaming an entire group um, or stereotyping an entire group based on just one experience that you've had, right? So this is talking about racism, even in, you know, um, uh, punishing, let's say, all quote-unquote men, right, for her, um, rather than just the person who had punished her, Athena. And this is talking about revenge on innocent parties, again, because they are um, part of a specific group that is labeled um this is about bias and being biased, talking about stereotypical labeling and judging a group, again, a culture, a, um, even a team, you know, anything like that, a camaraderie, a community, you know, based on one experience and or even hearsay that was because of something negative and being stuck and tied into, again, false narratives and putting a bias or stigma in your mind and making that to be called the truth. Um, again, it's about realization of being alone and forgotten with this energy. You know, I'm having an ideal life and or a promise for you know, future and having life turned asunder. So this is not a Debbie Downer archetype, but Medusa's energy and the archetype is all about, you know, being horrified and, you know, having to sit with and adjust to these new physical and mental forms, plus feeling a sense of loneliness and having to adapt to that in a sense of these uprisings of anger and feeling the sting of being punished, right, with the curse of snakes for hair, constant reminder, um, living beings, the guarantee of isolation due to just the source of what you have become, right? Um, this is all about also an innocent woman's journey as a maiden, being an innocent, then having, again, a trauma or affliction. Um, and be told that the fault is with her. So that adds a layer, and of course, even being punished in this situation, um, blaming and shifting the blame to the victim, adding more humiliation, trauma, hurt feelings, um, not being able to speak your truth, you know, having your power taken away, and feeling both, you know, spoiled for the future and spoiled in reputation, also having a mistrust of justice be your narrative and being emotionally scarred um, within your journey and having this 
scar form a sense of habits or a behavior, something that is bubbling to the surface that is pretty nasty and or quote unquote ugly, right? Because of these festering wounds and scars that we have deep within us and tend to just have the marinating energy of anger when we talk about the archetype of Medusa. Also, you know, um, it's not all bad. I feel that when doing research, there were a couple of very interesting positives. I feel that the traditional story of Perseus, you know, Perseus goes on a hero's journey and he's the one who actually kills Medusa. Um, Medusa is a Gorgon. She's one of three Gorgon sisters and he goes on an epic hero's journey and one of his missions is to kill her, which he does successfully. And so this head in the traditional tale is used as a shield and protection and actually defeats and wards off the evil Kraken. And in traditional, I think, um, reading many, many years and cultures of Greek um, oral histories talk about, you know, taking the head and even a picture or image of Medusa's head and using it as a, a totem, like an idol, to ward off anything evil. So, ironically, she is somehow depicted, I think wrongly, as being one that wants to exemplify or do wrongdoing, bad things, evil, be, you know, someone of a violent person, etc., but basically was imprisoned and punished and assaulted and basically was completely the victim within her story. So I think that it's very neat in a karmic, you know, cycle of regeneration and, you know, what goes around comes around when we talk about, you know, the fact that Athena punished her to become a monster, but in the end, her post-humus, right, her post-mortem state, her head actually wards off an even bigger monster that was going to kill um, many people. So it did good and continued to in traditions with the image, again, being something to ward off evil. And also, you know, post-mortem as well, when, again, Perseus is on his journey and kills Medusa, cuts off her head. We have a birth of Pegasus and Kryon that is something of magical um, quality, right? She is post-mortem and able to give birth. So I thought that was really neat. Pegasus, if you're familiar. And Kryon um, also, you know, this has a big meaning, of course, with sisterhood and sisters that you can go to and run to in a time of crisis, peril, trauma, assault, and who we can trust. So there's a trinity, the three Gorgon sisters, um, one of which is Medusa. And Medusa is the only one that is um, not immortal. So her sisters stay alive and she is, you know, maybe to her benefit actually. Um, she is put to death so that she does not have to do the eternal punishment, right, of isolation, etc. Uh, her head is, again, is seen as a protective, good quality of an, a good idol or totem to ward off evil. So I just thought that that was a really neat karmic tie that, you know, what goes around comes around, tying it back to this image that was meant after being cursed by Athena to create, you know, hideous repulsiveness was actually likened and sought after as an image to help protect and bless um, Greeks in real life, right? So I think that when we talk about the archetype of Medusa, I'll leave off with the theme about, you know, even this myth, right, is not even told with the entire truth to society um, because I'm sure if you did think Medusa and you're familiar with it you would think of the story of her ability to turn men to stone to statues and this is not something that is actual this is not something mentioned in the 
Greek text. And so that was added on and we just add it as our narrative, right? Forming that narrative as our truth and assuming that that is part of her archetype or part of her story. And so I think this, um, to leave you off with, this archetype talks about not knowing the entire story of origin or entire truth or entire situation, just basing it on assumptions and not taking the time to get to know the person, place, or thing with your own authentic self without bias, without preconceived notions, hearsay, videos, things of evidence that, uh, you know, remote viewing that you think that you astral travel and know the person. This is all about assuming and perceiving someone in an ill manner or in a way in which is not the truth based on bias and, you know, this kind of gossip, girl hysteria, uh, jealousy, unempowering again, feminine competition vibe where Athena was green with envy and could not help her mortification and humiliation that the woman who was supposedly the most beautiful mortal and sought after was actually not even coming on to Neptune or Poseidon. This was absolutely humiliating for Athena and both of these people at two different points in the story are misunderstood, right? So Athena is misunderstood because she is said to be a heroine and someone who cast off in the story of Medusa because she was evil and had, you know, the story in a different form than it really truly was. So I think this just goes to show you, again, there is value in getting to know something fully or at least putting your energy into investing and putting an intent out there to try to find out. And wholly, my opinion, is lesson we can learn about this archetype. Never judge a book by its cover no matter what. Even when you think that you know a book or a person or a situation, a belief, a you know, spiritual experience, understanding, notion. It definitely can take a 360 at any moment. I've learned that time and time again that we can shift our understandings. We can come to a new place of either uh, forgiveness and or understanding on who or what a situation was, you know, who this person was, what the situation meant to the person, things like that. So when we just listen to what we are fed, what story or what data we are, you know, brought. Maybe if we're just listening to a news station or news in general or anything that is presented to us without doing our own digging, um, mono a mono, right? Person to person. Whatever we are assuming we know the exact, you know, traits and or associations with a person we may find that there are different parts to the story which have been added, like that turning men to stone, and that have been kept away. Like the fact that no one really talks about Medusa having been an innocent virgin rape victim, pretty much. So in any case, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to another video on my archetypal analysis playlist. This is really um, my pleasure. I appreciate it. Definitely have been channeling the energy to do so as I heal in my physical journey. I wish you nothing but blessings, love, and light. I super appreciate you guys commenting, sharing, and liking the videos. It helps a lot and it's definitely been driving me in a very, very enthusiastic and loving way. I've been enjoying it very much and I'll do what I can when I can until I need to reserve and take my time out again. So thanks for sticking with me for the journey. And it's been a tough um, last two years just based on physical healing. So again, if you're with me to the end of this video, super, super appreciate you. Shout out. Positive energy. It's rough out there. It's crazy. But you know what? We can only go crazy and send our love vibes together. Blessings, love, and light, guys.